classroom. Today is Saturday. It's a long weekend and it's teacher convention weekend and family day weekend. So my kids actually had a five day weekend. I get a three day weekend. Normally after teacher's convention, my friends and I would head to the mountains or on some sort of mini vacation together. But these are absolutely not normal times. And so I am in my classroom where I spend all of my time during COVID and I do truly enjoy it. I actually had somebody message me on Instagram this past week and said like, you are always in your classroom on the weekends. Like, how do you do it? And honestly, I just truly enjoy it. I do not force myself to come in here. If I wake up in the morning and I don't wanna to go to school, I don't. And I don't think anyone should. I come in when I want to and when I have the motivation to, and I stay home and lie on the couch and watch Netflix when I don't have the motivation to. So you do you, whatever works for you. If your teacher weekend needs to be completely restful, do that. If your teacher weekend needs to be spent in your classroom because that's what you truly enjoy and that's what keeps you going, then do that. Do whatever you gotta do to get through this COVID time and that is my tip for today. But I am in the classroom. I'm really excited because I decided I needed to take on a project this weekend. I'm very much a project oriented person. I love having like something that I am creating and I find it to be truly enjoyable, like I said. So I'm in my classroom today and we are going to be making writing privacy folders. So the way that I personally structure my writing, and this is definitely something that I've learned over the past few years, of teaching grade five but i have learned that kids come to me and a lot of them are like reluctant writers and don't have great stamina in writing so i guess i kind of took the idea from like daily five cafe where you build kids reading stamina over time and how long your class can read for independently and i kind of took that concept and applied it to writing so i start my year off very casually with writing whereby we do a lot of journal writing so i will use picture prompts video prompts spoken prompts written prompts random things that i allow my kids to be super creative use their imaginations and write about and i mark more so based on participation versus like grammatical structure and spelling and how much they wrote. I really try not to focus on those things because I want to build that stamina. So the kids will write for four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes. And then we gradually progress as the year goes on because by the end of grade five, I need them to be able to write like stories and three paragraph essays and things like that. So now that we're at the point in February, I'm really getting to that stage of grade five where I am focusing on encouraging my kids to become independent writers, where they can sit at their desk and write for an extended period of time by themselves with very little assistance. And they can go through that writing process of drafting, writing, revising, editing, creating the good copy, like going through that process with my help, of course, and with my guidance, but more independently than they ever have before. One of the ways that I think I can help them with that is by creating these writing folders. So I am normally a recreate the wheel type of person. And you can laugh at me because <laughs> I laugh at myself. I definitely re recognize that as like a weakness in myself in that I often try to make things for myself, like from scratch. I don't really buy a lot on teachers, pay teachers. I don't use a lot of things from other teachers, even though I think they're awesome. I really like to make them for myself. And this morning I was sitting on my couch and I was flipping through um, some of like the resources that I have, some of the things I've made in the past, some of the things that I think my kids need in this writing folder. And I was trying to compile like a package for myself of all of these things to put together. And then it kind of got to a point where I was like, what are you doing? Go on Teachers Pay Teachers and find something that is already created for you. Because there are thousands of teachers out there who are already creating these things so that I can go and spend a couple of dollars and save hours of my life. So that is what I did. I went on Teachers Pay Teachers and I found something called Writing Assistant and it is from the store Hillary's Teaching Adventures. And I always like to sh give credit where credit's due because teachers are working hard to help one another. So if you are in the same predicament that I am or you're focusing on the same goal of creating independent writers, then check out Hillary's store. But I think that this is so cool. And I will show you this once I get it all printed out, but she calls it a writing assistant and it's like a 
file folder of resources for kids to use when writing. And it has all sorts of little tiny tidbits and pieces of information and things that you know the kids are gonna put their hands up and ask me, but if I can have it on their writing privacy folder, then they can find the information for themselves. And I absolutely love that. So this is what we're going to be up to today. And I'm gonna keep it relatively simple because I think I am a little bit extravagant sometimes and I <laughs> bite off more than I can chew. So I am gonna try to keep this pretty simple. We are going to make them from folders that I got at the Dollar Tree, which I will show you. I will show you all the resources once I get them printed. And I'm just gonna take you along as I create these for my students. So whether you are working on creating these writing folders along with me or you have another project to tackle in your classroom, <laughs> let's support each other, let's motivate each other, and let's jump right into it. All right, you guys, so I saw this idea originally on Pinterest like years ago, so I cannot give credit because I don't know or remember where I saw it, but you can get these project display boards. You can get them like a lot of places like Staples and stuff, but I was able to get them at the Dollar Tree, so $1.25, and I'm going to be able to use this to make two because I am going to cut them in half. So I was able to make these for pretty cheap. I have seen, and you can explore Pinterest if you need other ideas, but a lot of people like tape or laminate file folders together, like take two to four file folders and put those together to make these. But I thought that these would be quite sturdy and perhaps a bit more durable. So this is what I'm gonna try out. Obviously I'll let you know in the end if I recommend it or not, but I am gonna start by cutting all of them in half. So this is probably gonna take a minute, but I'm just gonna measure them cut them hopefully using a Zacto knife and that will work <laughs> and then we'll be able to start organizing what we're going to put on them. These skies of a different light, why noise it keeps me up at night, I can't help but think back to you. poster boards cut some definitely turned out better than others but I knew it wasn't going to be perfect and I just had to take off my perfectionist hat and be okay with the way that they turned out anyway I printed off um that package that I was telling you about just on white paper just to see what sections I wanted to include on the kids actual folders so I've been kind of substituting what I think I want to include in there and what I don't. I'm definitely picking and choosing. It's quite a giant package. You could technically put resources on the back as well. I have seen teachers like on Pinterest and stuff who do it on both sides. I am just going to do it on the front though, just to alleviate my kids from like getting up and turning around and moving their board and things like that. I just don't want them to be doing that, but you could absolutely do that. So the sections that I have chosen to include, I included the three different types of writing that we mainly focus on. So persuasive, expository, and narrative. So I'm putting those on the outsides so that as we kind of go through those types of writing throughout the year, we can look at that as like a reference of what style we're using. I also have a transition words section because I loved that she included transition words because I use these all the time with my kids and I often um, just put transition words up on the smart board. So this is perfect for them to have right there. 
There's also hooks. So one of the things that we're going to be focusing on is entertaining beginnings. Um, I do typically use empowering writers to help my kids write interesting stories. So I like that hooks are there so that they don't always start their story with once upon a time or hi, my name is Tressa or whatever the case may be. Um, there's types of sentences and how to improve sentences, which I love. I especially love how to improve a sentence, like adding detail and making it more interesting. I always word it as like spicing it up when I talk about it with my kids. Figurative language, we actually just started figurative language. We started with onomatopoeia two weeks ago, I think. So this is actually perfect to have on there. Capitalization, this is something we did early on in the school year. So I love that it has that. And she actually has the acronym MINTS. So if you haven't heard of that before, months, I, pronoun, names, titles, and start of a sentence. Tricky words, so she has the difference between two, two, and two, there, there, and there, and your, and your, which I'm super picky about. I was like an English major in school, so I have always been like obsessed with spelling and grammar and doing those things properly. Common editing rules, and then another acronym, ARMS, so add, remove, move, and substitute, which I absolutely am excited. I've actually never heard of that before, but I'm excited to use that with my kids. And then, like I said, my last one's narrative writing. So I think that's where I'm going to stay. I also really, really liked, um, she had a section called dead words. And I know lots of teachers say said is dead. I also never let my kids use the word nice or good. We talk about how nice and good don't really mean anything. They're very just like fluff, like whatever words. So said, nice, good, <laughs> those kinds of things. But um, it wasn't all typed in there and I didn't feel like it was big enough for my kids to actually write on effectively. So I'm going to leave that section out. Now I'm still debating. I think that I'm gonna put the kids' names on this. She actually has a section <laughs> um, for their name at the top. And then I also really liked this section where they could put like a clothespin on which like phase of the writing process they're in or step of the writing process. But I actually have a bulletin board that I will be putting up later in the year for that. So I think I'm just going to nix that. Um, because I don't really have any space. But I think perhaps on like the reverse side, I will put their name and then maybe a spot where I could put like a plastic folder that they could keep any writing they're working on, but maybe not because they do have like space for that in their desk or their language arts do a tang or whatever. But stay tuned for that because I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do. Anyway, my next step is going to be to figure out how I'm going to color code this. And then I'm going to have to cut my life away. <laughs> and um, especially the circles. I don't love that she included circles because that means that I have to cut out circles for all of my kids times two, but that's okay. Most of them are rectangles and squares. So I'll be able to use the cutter for that. So it shouldn't be too painful. Anyway, I'm gonna go decide what colors to use and print those off. It is like a couple hours later because our copier is ridiculously awful to deal with. Like it breaks all the time and it was just consistently jamming and I just needed to like power through and get things copied. I ended up using um, a different printer in the hallway that was like just a grade level printer because I was going so crazy with the copier in here. Anyway, 
typical teacher problem, but I have all my piles laid out and I originally hadn't planned on laminating everything because I'm very careful about what I choose to laminate and I only ever laminate things that I'm going to be able to reuse. But as I was cutting these things out, I was like, I can make these quite durable so that they can last more than just this year. So I am actually going to laminate the parts so that I will be able to use this with future classes because it is taking me a long time. And if I'm putting this much work into something, I will want it to last. So I'm going to tackle some laminating right now, get them cut out, and then we will start putting together our folders. ready to start gluing. So what I have decided, and I've not usually done this before, I'm usually um, pretty fond of taping things on or just gluing them on with a glue stick, but I thought I would actually try a hot glue gun for this. Um, again, for durability and also just because I think that it will stick really well. So we're going to give this a try and I will let you know <laughs> what I think about it as we go. So, looking over at my sample that I made and I'm just going to make sure that I set it up the way I was hoping. So on the top left, I've got persuasive writing and on the bottom left expository. Then I have my figurative language kind of in the middle. My narrative writing is going to go on the bottom right. And I'm putting hooks here, I believe. And then I am going to put like my editing together. So the common editing rules and then arms, I believe I was going to put both up here. I may change if I kind of don't like how this, how the colors go together. One of the things I didn't love about this pack, to be completely honest, was that all the pages were mixed together. Like I almost wish it was like one page had four or six of these. And so you print them out for your whole class versus like one student. It was kind of made like so that you could just print one copy instead of like mass production, <laughs> which is fine. I know that some teachers would probably prefer that and we all have our preferences and that's totally cool. This was just kind of what I thought about it. <laughs> so anyway, am liking the way this is turning out for the most part. I'm just trying to think like for color because I didn't really plan it like color wise because that wouldn't have worked out. I'm just trying to plan how I would like to have it set up to look the best.
you guys, I am so thrilled with how they have turned out. It was definitely a long project like that took a lot of hours. It is pitch black outside and I want to go home because I don't like being here alone in the dark. <laughs> Anyway, I definitely want to give a full credit to Hillary and her Teachers Pay Teachers store. I'm going to link this whole package down below because it saved me. Like, I can't imagine it took me, like, I think I was here for seven hours <laughs> and it took me that long without even making it myself, just downloading it. Um, it cost me $4 for Hillary's package, but it was fantastic and I really think it's going to make a huge difference in my classroom. So I'm definitely sending some love out to Hillary today because she totally saved me with having this wonderful package on TPT that I could turn into privacy folders for my students for their writing. I am so thrilled because I really and truly believe this is going to help my students to become more independent in writing because they now have a folder that's going to go around their desk that is instantly going to answer a ton of questions that they would normally put their hand up and ask me. So it's not only gonna save me, but I really think my students are going to appreciate it. So if you're looking for a wonderful package, I will link this one down below. And I highly recommend going to the Dollar Tree and cutting out these trifold like stands because this worked out perfectly for me and like I said I ended up laminating the paper and hot gluing them on there so I honestly think these are going to be folders that will withstand the test of time and of course like if I have to edit um, or redo a couple as time progresses that's fine but I don't really picture myself having to make a full class set again for a really long time Thank goodness, because this day was exhausting. I am so ready to go home, put my jams on, and watch a little bit of Netflix, and then honestly go to bed. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this project. I hope it gave you some motivation, and I also hope you joined me and took on a project of your own today. We totally need to support each other as teachers and help each other get through any school year, but especially this school year with all the added challenges and stressors that have been put on us by the current situation of the world. But I know everyone out there is just doing the best they can with what we've got and that's all we can do. Anyways guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it truly supports me and my channel here. And I look forward to seeing you in my next one.